know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Dante, whenever you want to go start talking all for a couple right. seconds. And then... All right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. We have a special show today. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Oh, you know I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm still working on my catchphrases for 2021. Okay, you came up uh, with anything? You Death to America? Is that one that we came Oh, on? that's no. not one. Yeah, I mean, I like it, but... Uh, it's, not taken. it's been taken <laughs> way too <laughs> many times. <laughs> oh, it's copyrighted? I got to almost hack at this stage now. <laughs> there's a bunch of people in the cave right now going, check out this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there's, somebody, there's a dude in the cave going, this motherfucker stole my shit. <laughs> He's the Carlos Mencia of terrorism. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, no good catchphrase? All right, I'll go back to the drawing board. Gotta right, go, go back, back to the drawing board. Go back. You had another one. What was the other one you had? Oh, I don't even remember. Oh, I don't remember. It was, I, oh, I'd it have to find old. it. He was like all the way in or something like yeah. that. <laughs> I remember um, laying boots. I'm here laying boots to bitches. I'm here laying boots to bitches. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, not good right. either. I let thought that one was the best one. But. Uh, well, you know, I mean, wait, that's debatable. Let me introduce my guest. My uh, my guest in the building, good friend of mine, funny, funny dude, comic, uh, works all over the city, has a podcast called Cheaper Than Therapy. Check it out for Mick Thomas. Y'all give it up for Mick. What's Thank going you. on, baby? Mick? Thanks, good to guys. have you here, bro. Thanks good for having have me, man. Finally excited to get, you know, to be able to get this to work. So thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while, for a couple a couple months now. So it's good yeah, to yeah. have you on. Um, what's dope is, um, it's funny, I, um, uh, I, I just, I like, so I don't know if you know this, but I do uh, relationship consulting, right? And right. I just got a call from a dude in Ireland uh, the other day. You probably know him. I don't know. Probably. It's that small. <laughs> His name is Patrick. So okay. You probably, you probably know him. So you've narrowed it down <laughs> to four people. Let's find and you. And he has another cousin named Patrick. So, like, <laughs> so you should a, be able to find he also, him. He also has a sister named Patrick. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it, it's interesting because, um, I, you know, he was having, you know, he was having problems with his relationship. And what I was, one of the things that I, I, I think is interesting is that w w there's a, there's two dynamics I find in, in, in Europe. Number one, women, the, on a base level, they are kind of raised to take care of their men. Yes. Like it's a base level. Kind of, kind of, you know, almost, but. You have to be grateful for it. If you're not grateful for it, then it's the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like you have to be kind of like appreciative or right. not. You're, if not, you're going to hear about it. I mean, you're going to hear about it anyway. Listen, Ireland, <laughs> listen, there's a pub in Ireland to this day that still doesn't allow women in it. 
Really? Right? Yeah. And there's a tour you can take in Ennis in Ireland. It's a tour that tourists will go on and it shows what happens to women who nag too much. So I wouldn't put that much stock in how great Irish girls are, to be honest with you. <laughs> when, and there's a generation of people that, you know, there's a whole uh, uh, generation of us that's trying to keep them out of everything. So I don't know. <laughs> Well, what do you think the what do you think the whole the the lack of progressiveness is is comes? Do you think it comes from the church? Definitely the church. Everything is the church. Every last thing is the church. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I remember being in school and it's like if you got in trouble, you got sent to the principal. Anything higher than the principal was a priest, and then you knew you're in trouble. Okay. You know what uh, I mean? Like, yeah, it's like the pre the, the principal handled first level stuff. Uh-huh. All right. And then you if you got really bad, like if you were like the Nino Brown of of <laughs> Of messing around in school, you were gone right to the priest, and that's where it got serious. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I, I had, I, I was able to smash a couple of Irish girls simply because mm. there was this kind of resurgence. I mean, uh, there, so I don't know how long you've been here. Oh, uh, about 15, 16 years. Okay, do you were you around when the Boston was open, the Boston Comedy Club? I don't, I don't think so. I no. don't, maybe. I mean, whenever it closed, I don't know. I, oh, when I started. You know, you know where we where it was, right? It was yeah, on yeah. Do you remember when it was the Comedy Village, or you don't remember that either? No, I don't. I don't remember that. Okay, so underneath it was the Bag It In, which was this Irish pub. Okay, and and there were all these Irish girls in there, and it's like you. Well, first of all, they an Irish chick will punch you in the fucking mouth. Like I've mm. seen them punch a dude in the fucking mouth like just straight up yeah they, they do like to throw punches to start but like over here american women will say shit like my man will fuck you up and you're like wait what what am i doing right <laughs> and then whereas in ireland they'll walk up and it's just fucking clock and like oh fuck now i'm now number one you have to break your this fight up and then you have to continue like she almost tagged you in without tagging you in like maybe you watch wrestling yeah, yeah, and a guy yeah. goes back into the rope and he, he tags the guy him on the back in. Yeah, 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 that's what it's like. But you're like, fuck, now I got to clean up this mess. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I remember a couple of times me getting laid because they were talking about the church. The church doesn't tell me what to do with my body. <laughs> I, I go, you're right. You are absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. You should not tell the church. I'll fuck whoever I want to fuck. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Damn that's straight. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> That's it. You you are the best way to make a protest. And, and like you that. know what? <laughs> you know what? Also, you don't need the church the church telling you you need condoms. Screw that. Right. Be yeah, your own yeah, person. You don't. <laughs> Under what science are you basing this on? Yeah. You know what I mean? That condoms are, are a sin. I'm like, uh, I got an idea to get back at the church. I mean, I don't, I'm just going to say me. I, I think yeah. you would. it really pay for it. huh? That's it. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> But the but uh, the one thing I like is it's so funny because Ireland is kind of known for the, the strife between the Catholics and the Protestants. But the one thing they both agree on is subjugating women. That's the uh, only uh, thing. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll put down their swords. Yeah, that's they'll the, only the only common ground. The only common ground they have is to, you know, to keep women down. It's amazing. Yeah, they'll be on a battlefield and they'll be fucking hacking at each other with swords and guns <laughs> and shit. And some girl will yell off in the field and go, wait, wait, what am I? Who? What did she say? And all of a sudden, <laughs> like, they're like, let's get that bitch. Right? Yeah, they're, 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 they're they'll come together with that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, it's a it's a weird concept, but, but it was like uh, one of the things because I've done a couple. You know, I've been doing the consultations for a couple of years. How many? About six years now, right, Harry? Okay. Uh, yeah. Consultations about six. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and I, I get a lot of dudes from Ireland. I get guys from from Scotland. I get dudes from the UK from I mean, from all over. Yeah. But it, it, there is a base level of uh, sort of like housewifeness. Do you know what I mean? No, like, no, you don't know what I mean. I don't, I don't know what you mean by housewifeness, like cleaning and cooking, like cooking oh, okay. meals. all right. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. A, you know, desire to, a desire to be kind of more of a homekeeper. Right. And that okay. like, like to, be, fulfill, be, to fulfill that role, to choose be a that mammy, role. be a mammy or a mother. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And to do those right. things. I mean, I, I, you know, there's this this kind of movement to be professionals and stuff like that and learning how to read and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> but there's on a base level, it's that um, and it's not I, I, I find it to be not such a materialistic thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's 
it's like, well, first of all, like one of the, and I kind of half joke when I say it, but then there's a part of me that's like kind of serious. Like Dom Herrera has a great joke about Irish women. He said, there's only tens and twos. There's no <laughs> in between, right? There's, there's no, that's she's funny. all right. It's either you're stunning mm-hmm. or, you're, or you're a hound, right? right. <laughs> and, and there's tens or twos. But like, and the thing about American women is like, I blame the difference on hot moms. Okay. You know mean? what I mean? Like, like a hot mother, like a sexy, mo- like s- they're no longer, nobody's taking care of their man anymore. And right. I know it sounds chauvinistic and I'm sorry if it does. It's not the point I'm trying to make, Right. but there's less care gone into your family because now you're at the gym. Have you seen moms on TikTok? Oh yeah. Like yeah. it's just, it's like hot moms is, is what's fucking like. I got to pick my kids up from school and I stand in the parking lot mm-hmm. watching like, like, what do you wear? Like how, cause I, listen, I grew up, I'll give you the name of a mom who lived next door to me. I don't even need to describe her to you. I'll just mm-hmm. tell you her name and you'll go, all right, I see her in my head. Her <laughs> name, her name was Mrs. Gilbert. Right? <laughs> I don't even have to describe her to you. You know what she looks like. Yeah, right, right, now, right. Nobody was trying to uh, have a fantasy about Mrs. Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, I got Nobody. some friends who are mothers, man, and they're mothers of teenagers. I'm like, wait, you're bringing a teenager around you? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and, and I think then that kind of gets, you know, but I think that's why Ireland kind of holds on to it a bit more because we don't have, again, I love Irish women, of course, but we just don't, it's not by the ratio, we don't have that many, yeah. you know, tens, to be honest with you. Tens and twos. Are you married now? No. Yes. Yes, I am. How long have you been married? Uh, 16 years, I think. Wow, were you married to an Irish woman or no, no, American. Yeah, American. yeah. How did so, that come about? Met her in Dublin, in Ireland. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, Dublin. Ironic. Yeah, was she yeah. on vacation or she was just yeah, she out. was on vacation. Yeah. And I was, I went to a pub with my friends because I lived there. And the next thing you know, I'm sitting here doing a podcast. Like it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> you know. Uh, was it a was it a difficult transition for you coming here or or? You know, the way things are done or no, or, or if you can kind of frame that, how to, what the difference is. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't because I'm used to traveling everywhere. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. for the longest time, like I would take something personal. Like, do you know what I mean? Like if you went to 7-Eleven, right, or something and you're online and you're buying something and all of a sudden you're talking to the woman or the person behind the register. How are you today? Oh, I hear it might rain. And you hear someone in the back fucking hurry up. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it would take me like a week to get over that. I'm like, was really? was, I, was I wrong? Like what? Cause Irish people, like they're just, they're very kind and friendly people. Like they really are. And everyone's like, because everywhere you go, there's a conversation with somebody. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when you go into like a, uh, like a, like I said, a seven 11 or you're online or something. And if you hold up the line for an unnecessary second, mm-hmm. like you've offended these people now. And I like, and it took me a while to kind of get hard right, over right. here to get tough. You know what I mean? Um, even though I used to be a fighter back in Ireland, but it just took me a while to be to be very tough on the outside here too. Emotionally, you know I mean? well, yeah, cannot taking... give a shit. Take that personal, like you know yeah. what I mean. To the point now, where it's like I wouldn't even look down if someone yells. Now I wouldn't even turn my head anymore. It's like, all right, that's what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what and I mean. But... I was thinking about this the other day too. It's it's sort of like um, so the the, the it, there's something that we do on the show. It's like the guys who have problems approaching women and something so on and so forth and i have like a a plan i'm actually working on a whole online school where i'll be able to teach like we you know there's techniques that i do to get guys more social right and one of the things we do is we we talk about laying the five bricks it's going out uh for eight weeks talking to five women a day okay just not with the intention on getting a number or having sex just almost just paying a compliment, non-sexual compliment, just to talk. You know what I mean? Um, uh, How are you? Yeah, just something as easy as that. How are you today? Wow, your 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 makeup is impeccable. I love your glasses. Like whatever it is. Right, right. Because it's funny how you said that in Ireland, there's this there's this constant. Everything is a conversation. Right. So it becomes easy to talk because you're always talking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it does. And you kind of have you. It's almost like over here and I don't go to him, but I, I would with a There's a certain comic. He's a friend of mine. And after every show, I can't mention his name because he's on TV a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, but after every show we do together, he wants to go to a strip club. Right. And I, I don't like I'm not paying for some girls to pretend to give me attention. Yeah. But like it's that mentality. Like Sometimes guys who are shy go to a strip club and these girls who are 
So now their confidence is up because they spent two hours talking to this girl and then they'll go back out to a club or a bar mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're like, hey, well, I've just got all this confidence all of a sudden. And I think this oh, so it's even though it's it's fake, it's yeah. it, it kind of uh, do you think uh, like what do you attribute to that? Is it is it a is a delusional kind of thing? Or is it just the fact that you're talking? It's almost like an appetizer. You know what I mean? You just you go out and I think you're talking to like these girls that normally if you saw that stripper with I mean with, with clothes on, you wouldn't walk up to her at a supermarket. But now mm -hmm. she's gonna sit at on a on a stool, she's gonna face you, she knows the body language, she knows when mm -hmm. to touch your knee. Like they're they're professionals. Right, 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 right. They're professionals at giving you attention. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like your confidence is up. So you I talk to that one. Then another one might come over and you'll talk to that one. And then you go to a club and now you're kind of oiled up and you know how to kind of how it's to like get you, it's almost like you're doing open mics. Exactly. Right. You're running your set before you go out. <laughs> you, know? you know, it's interesting, though, because, you know, like Harry, Harry and I, um, like we we don't we didn't frequent comedy clubs. But if there were comedy shows within the comedy club or somebody was doing something, we'd be in the comedy club. And man, I, I used to I flip them every time. Just about right. Harry, every time we've been a strip club. Yeah. Like I've always flipped one like at a strip club. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like, it's I happened mean, a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, where where they're um, but you, you genuinely know. don't give a shit. Yeah, so yeah, that's part yeah. of it is you genuinely don't care. So you just you'll talk to somebody and you pay them no mind, really. Yeah. And you don't give them all the energy that everybody else gives them. You don't get right. excited and giddy because who gives a shit? Yeah. And then, you know, you still have the confidence after the fact, but then they, they're intrigued a little that you don't give a shit. Yeah. And then eventually I don't even know if they're intrigued. Their their ego is hurt. Yeah. 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 Well, That's because they're is. so accustomed to getting right. Right. so much attention. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What's up with this guy where he doesn't give a fuck about my vagina? And I'm right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've been told it's special all night long. And now all of a sudden it's not special anymore. Like that's yeah, they can't handle it, man. They can't yeah. handle that. Yeah, I, it's fine. I was talking to somebody today and he was saying how um, I, I was saying how you know, there's this men are like, it's it's interesting. If you said how you had to get accustomed to how people talk and, you know, if you in 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 in, in America and how they're just so short and and you can't take that stuff personal. Yeah. But what's what's interesting about that is that women never deal with it. Like you can always give some pussy away. Even an, uh, an ugly bitch, even an ugly bitch. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. You just got to hang in there. You yeah, just yeah, yeah. got to hang on to the end of the night and someone will pick it up. Someone's going to pick it up. And if you're really aggressive, you don't have to wait till the end of the night. If you if right. you're if you're aggressive enough to put it out there, look, you uh, you want in on this club or what? Right, it's, right. You know, it's yeah, open yeah, for yeah. business. Your dude will bounce in a minute. And so when you know, so whereas I, and I was I was I was talking about this today, you know, from your from the inception of you finding little girls attractive and you first send that note, do you like me? Check yes, check no, right? right? And you get that, you get the sad face with the tears, right? <laughs> you're you're learning how to deal with that kind of rejection already. Right. And so the rejection itself is something that we live with. We 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 it's it's like comics. It's like if you want to do if you want to do a bit and you want that bit to be and it's a it's a very nuanced or or a more prolific bit, you know that you got to go up and bomb. I mean, you you get with time, you get better where you know, OK, this is where the laughs. I know this is going to work and stuff, but you got to You have to fail because it's a trial and everything. And we're so accustomed to that, that era, you know, just being rejected, being rejected. It's like you said, we don't take it personal. Right. But then some guys go the opposite, right? Like you and I, it would sound like we kind of like, all right, let me. What happened? What did I do wrong? Did my right. breath stink? Did I stutter? Right. Did I was my fly right. open? Like, what right. the fuck did I maybe right. I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't open with that comment. It's creepy. Right. right. But then there's other guys that just don't learn from it. And as soon as they walk off, like, yeah, fucking bitch. And it's yeah. like, right. They, they, they hold on to that anger and that resentment then for the rest of the night. And every other girl is just treated with aggression. And then they'll never let that go. And then they'll just they'll never. They'll never get a woman. They'll just walk around with that. Just I that. I kind of feel like together. that's a. I, I kind of feel like that's a more of a, a new phenomenon. 
than it is now with the dating apps and stuff like that. It's a, because you, what, what did you do? Did you, did you box or did you MMA or what did you do? I kickboxed in Ireland. Okay. And then when I came over here, I boxed because there was no kickbox and everything was MMA when I moved over here. Yeah. So I went, I went from being like a European champion kickboxer mm-hmm. to uh, just going into the golden gloves over wow. here because there was no kickboxing in the middle. Right, 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 you know right. I mean? But well, it's it's interesting because even that, you know, it, it's funny. I'm on the way in here. My neighbor across the street, his son is, you know, he's he's kind of his son is kind of soft, but his father right. is he's got him in martial arts every right. day. So I'm like, hey, how's much? How's how's karate going? And he's like bad, you know, but it's but his pops knows that no matter what happens that that the idea of putting yourself out there being a you know i mean I, i'm quite sure they're not punching him in the face but even that physical content contact it it there's a there's something to that it, it's something social you know yeah it, and it also like it it will build up um this confidence that you don't know you're building like that's yeah. the thing about it you don't walk around all of a sudden your shoulders come back and you seem taller walking like this 10 year old kid. I don't know how old his kids you're talking about. Yeah. He's about you know? nine, 10. Yeah. Yeah. So, but out of nowhere, like that confidence is just going to, he's going to realize he's different, but he doesn't know what the reason why he's not going to be able to turn and go like, Oh, it's because martial arts It's not, but he's just going to become, yeah. he's just going to become different. And, he, and he's going to, he's going to realize that. So it's so beneficial to get, I mean, listen, you should teach your kids to fight regardless. And I know people, we live in a world now where people are fucking soft. Yeah. I'm like, listen, no, 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 go fucking fight. Yeah. Every kid needs to learn to throw a punch or get punched. Yeah, yeah. everybody, because people are too like soft nowadays, man. And you need to get punched at least once in your life to realize, yeah. like, all right, if I say shit, I'm gonna get smacked in the mouth for it, and it doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting thing. It's just you know all these things I call the broadband bullies. You know, right. like these guys are really tough on the internet. Um, and uh, Harry was telling me that Harry, tell that story we were talking about yesterday at uh, that happened at the stand. We won't na- mention any names. Oh yeah, there was a there was a guy who was uh, tweeting. And you know stuff. what? You can he mention was... names. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so, so Gomez, was, Louis Gomez, Louis J. Okay. Gomez. So right. Louis was. Uh, there was some guy. I think his name is Jake Flores or something. I don't know him okay. too much. I may comedy. have seen this tweet vaguely as I'm swiping by. I think I may have seen something about yeah, it. Yeah, there's a bit of controversy of it. But he was uh, talking quite a bit of shit towards Lewis, I guess. Uh, and then so Lewis found out he was going to be on this at the same club one weekend or one oh, night. Oh, a comic. He is a comic, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, in New York at the stand or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so Lewis... He goes, all right, I'm going to wait around and talk to this guy. I'm going to I'm going to this guy's been talking a bunch of shit on Twitter. So I yeah. want to kind of confront him. So Lewis waits till the guy gets there and then immediately kind of goes after him, like getting in his face and going, what do you got to say now, pussy? What do you got to say now? Huh? You got to And the guy had nothing. He said yeah. nothing. He just kind of cowered, looked down on the ground and was like, come on, grow up. Let's grow up and blah, 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 like. Which is what a lot of people do when there's some physical altercation after the fact, like, hey, this is ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, he just kind of looked, it was kind of sad. He looked like a a puppy dog that was like, and Lewis didn't beat him up because he could have. He could easily. uh, Yeah, but he wasn't giving him nothing back to even. He wasn't giving him anything. Oh, that's that's and then he just like took off his girl there, too, because that's funny if it's in front of his girl. I don't know uh, if it was in front of his girl. That's humiliating. I, I do man. believe he wrote up on a pizza thing or whatever. Like, uh, I think he delivers pizza or something. Because I remember Lewis was going to throw his pizza box like the <laughs> he had like a pizza warmer, which is like, come on, bro. You don't got to do that. And I think luckily, I think even Lewis was like, you know what? This has gotten sad. I don't need to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to fucking chuck his hot pizza box. I think Lewis was more confused as to what the fuck it was. Yeah, right, right, because right. he picked it up like he was gonna do some damage. He's like, what the fuck is it? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of like that. If that's the guy's and, uh, livelihood, you're like, all right. I mean, I already won. Do you and, know what uh, I mean? So there now there's some stories about Lewis uh, supposedly assaulting him and her together. Like, that's listen, what I, think I, I saw. Something like, I, yeah. from, again, I, I'm not gonna quote the tweet, so I don't want Lewis yeah. coming after me saying I fucking said this when I didn't. Yeah. But from when I, I look like the guy who argued that he's saying Lewis spit on her or something. Like, I don't. And, and the thing saying, is, Harry was there and none of that happened. I don't right. ever recall her yeah, people are getting shit, spit man. on. I don't recall her. I know he definitely got into Jake Flores' face. 
Yeah. So I guess you could. I don't know. My memory was that it's it wasn't that much. It's not like he punched much, him in the mouth either. He didn't, he didn't punch he, him in the mouth either. Uh, but I guess yeah. in theory, in theory, maybe you can argue that he was a quote unquote assaulted. I guess, but I definitely yeah. know he didn't do anything good to, for Lewis too, though. Like, it's not not enough people follow through, right? And especially, like, listen, I I had an incident here, and I I don't want to call this guy out because I think he learned from it. Yeah, yeah. But there's a comic I like. There's a comic I know, and you probably know him too. And I'll I'll, I'll uh, you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll put Tell the me name. After. You yeah, I'll, me after. I'll put this guy in the chat right now. Right. So uh, so this guy is one of one of my favorite comics and he's a, he's fantastic. So there you uh, go. Right. So I don't know if you know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. I do know him. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he does. He kind of not quit comedy. He took some time off recently. Uh -huh. Right. He took some time off to go pursue him and, him and I were really tight at one time. Right. right. But he's yeah. a fuck, he's a he's a machine like he's yeah, just yeah. one of those guys that rip it apart and he kind yeah. of. He gets in his own way, uh, yeah. which is fine. We all we all have our own self-destructive issues. Mm -hmm. So he quit comedy. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm at a show. I'm at a show. To you. Now, again, he took a sabbatical because he's off studying. So I, I go to a show the other the other night and I do a guest spot. Just turn up to the club. Hey, can I go up and do 10? Yeah, sure. Go up and do 10. So there's another guy headlining. And all of a sudden, the guy didn't steal his jokes, but he stole his whole persona. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, I, yeah, mean, I know. I know what you mean. It's fucking the guy you're talking about has a very distinct persona. Yeah. How he very... yells, how he does accents, yeah. how he does Pace, paces. Like, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Rhythm. He explodes. Then he whispers and he fucking explodes again. Yeah, yeah. And there's something weird about like it's bad enough to steal someone's jokes. Like that's scummy enough. But I think it's weirder if you steal their fucking persona. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I went up and started doing my act, but like I did it as dice. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's fucking creepy, man. So, but nobody, so I waited after the show and I said, Hey man, you know, he's not, he didn't quit. Right. And they go, what are you talking about? I go, look at you're long enough in the business now. To, Cause listen, when we all start, right. When you start comedy, I can't speak for you, but we all, well, no, we all mimic somebody, certain. right. Cause you don't have yeah. your own voice yet. You don't know. How, I don't know what to do on stage. I know what will I do with my hands? How do I move? Do I move? Do I sit? Do I stand? So you kind of for the first maybe year, possibly two, you mm -hmm. uh, you would like I could say right now, like I took on the mannerism of Billy Connolly, Scottish comedian, because he was the right, only right. comedian I knew. Yeah, I yeah. know so many guys did Regan. People do a tell. Um, yeah, well, that's a, well, we used to call it like when I used to talk to Patrice, we used to talk about these iconic kind of stylistic comics that birthed all these other comics. Yeah. Like, for instance, a lot of people like, uh, you know, you could argue that Patton Oswalt is a baby of Marin. Right. Uh, Absolutely. You know, it's become it's become something different. A tell birthed a whole bunch of dudes. Yeah. Um uh what you call it? Uh Todd Barry Reed was another Barry dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've even had comics who now we we like iconic dudes like like a guy like Ted Alexandro. Right. What I remember telling him, he goes, yeah, man, I absolutely loved. He said he loved Todd Berry. He loved that low energy and he loved uh, Dane Cook. So if right. you think about Ted, Ted's kind of a low energy physical yeah. dude. You know I what I mean? When you, I it's, like, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see if I don't say it, you don't know it. But as soon as like, I say it, you go, oh, fuck, yeah. Now that you point it out. But this, so I said to this guy, I was like, you know, he and I said, you know, he's not gone. Right. And I understand you're I goes, you're too long in comedy to be influenced. Right. You know what I mean? By now, you should have definitely got your own style. And but in general, like nobody, nobody would call a lot of people don't call people on their bullshit when yeah, it, yeah, when it needs yeah. to be done. And and I, so I think like if this guy started with Lewis for some reason, then fuck it, dude, well, you got to pay. You got to pay. Other the other thing price. was the other thing was that uh, I forgot about was he talked uh, an amazing amount of shit. Lewis shit on him. He ran away. And then he started talking <laughs> shit again on Twitter immediately, like within the hour. Yeah. Right, like yeah. he learned nothing. Yeah. Because you live in a world where you can't beat the fuck out of somebody. Yeah. Right. You Which can, again, though. that's the problem. Eh. People think you can't, but you fucking can. Well, I guess. But then you know, you, the consequences the behind consequences it is so are, are yeah, pretty yeah. rough, man. That's the problem. I, I say this all the time, though. When I was a kid, Doug, I remember having a fight. It was uh, three of my dudes and five or two other dudes on Broadway and 47 <laughs> and the cops let us shoot a fair one. I mean, it wasn't a fair one because it wasn't even, but right. they, you know, they did it until we, you know, until it looked like somebody was going to get hurt. They broke it up and then we went and we went 
and then I went to see Mark for Death with Steven Seagal. Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, holy shit. So it, it's it's so now as soon as there's an altercation, everybody gets locked up. You know what yeah. I mean? There's no who started it, who didn't start it. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So the guy, you told the guy, what did the guy say? So he go, he just said, what are you talking about? I go, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Like you, you waited till he left and you took on his whole, like he sounds just like, I'd almost yeah. respect it more if he said, I am a blank impersonator. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I'm a I, cover band. I'm a like if, comic if cover I was band. A, if I was a dice impersonator, like if yeah. I was a, like, I know I've heard, I know uh, Tim Dillon put up a story this week about a Rodney Dangerfield impersonator. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I, I'd almost, I'd almost respect that. Like a Bob yeah, Dylan yeah. cover band, but he wasn't. It's a cover but, band. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I go, man, like you, you just waited till he left. I said, it's kind of scummy. It's yeah. kind of, it's kind of creepy. And he was like, all right, make whatever. I go, man, like I got nothing against you. I said, but like, you just need to be told that that's not right. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I, it's funny. I just, I just started reinventing. Re, I started rewatching the whole. So I, you know, I think it's been a year now that Mencia has been showing up and doing like because of Bobby Lee's. He's doing Bobby Lee's podcast and stuff in there. And he, and and you watch this dude, and he's a freaking sociopath. Right. Like he's literally saying he didn't steal jokes, and the reason why people don't like him is because he's been so. Because he's been so he was he, he he agrees that he was an asshole. He says, you know, when I came in, Eddie Griffin and uh, Paul Mooney used to bump you at the store and they would do 45 minutes. And he goes when he got his chance, he did the same thing. But then there's stories about him doing people's joke before he brought them doing people's closer before he came up and stealing jokes and trying to bury people and, and just all kinds of stuff. And so what's interesting is. I'm, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to go too far on the comedy aspect of it, but when you talk about the just the authenticity of who you are as a person, finding your own voice, finding that level of authenticity in relationships, it's it's the same thing. That lack of authenticity makes you unattractive. It, it is uh, and it's not because uh, it's not because the woman you may be pursuing gets it because she might not even know what persona right. what happens is and and you'll know this about you know as a fighter like look i mean i i i, I bare knuckle for it for years like, yeah me too it's a lot of know, fun it's, it's <laughs> but the bottom line it's it's you're in there it is what it is do you, do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, yeah. if you, 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 those guys are some of the nicest guys in the world. I mean, not all of them, but I mean, for the most part, they're the calmest because when it's on the line, it's on the line. Yeah. You get punched in the face. And and so you, you approach people in a way that you know that you can be punched. You, you act in a way that you, I used to say this tweet, tweet like you could get punched in the fucking mouth. Well, that's, I, I, I fucking bugs. I, uh, I remember like being in my car recently and this guy was being a dick in the car. And I was driving in a neighborhood, not on a main road. Mm -hmm. And I pulled up beside him. I go, motherfucker, this is not like Twitter. Like I will follow you to your house and beat you on your lawn in front of your kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like don't act like, cause for some reason when people are in cars, yeah. they're in this protective bubble. Like I can do what the fuck I want in here. Yeah, I can yeah. give you the finger. I can yeah, yell yeah. some racial slurs. Yeah. I can, I can for some reason dig in my nose for yeah, gold. Yeah. It, 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 it's almost this this false sense of security. They're just yeah, digging man. away. Like, dude, what? Are you, like, I see you. There's glass. Like, I, yeah, and I'd say the same with uh, online. It's like you can't touch me. I'm I'm online. Yeah, you know I'll what find mean? you. I'll find you. Oh, I will. Like, if you're serious about that, then here I am. I'm at this place, but I'm. Listen, I'm old enough. I own a house now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got yeah, kids. Yeah. I'm, I am. My days of like looking for fights are long over. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're yeah. long over. But I'm not going to take shit from anybody from anyone. Like anyone. Well, it's it's interesting that the authentic when you talk about the authenticity of 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 being. So it, there's something that I've been exploring is is not having that authenticity. Like being a fraud about who you are. It doesn't just. It's not just. It does. It, it's not just being uh being exposed right it it is a it is an attitude that you hold because even if everybody nobody else knows that you're a fraud 
it comes through your pores. It comes through you. It's in your walk. It's in your talk. It's in your it's it's in the things that you say. It's in the movies you watch, the things you read. That it's it literally it's just like what you said about a young kid who, who takes martial arts. Right. All of a sudden, there's this masculinity that comes out his shoulders and back. There's this. There's a level of discipline. It, it's he doesn't really understand how that is. But the same thing is true. The opposite way is is your the fraudulence is something that's in you. Even when you I, I was I was discussing this with somebody. Um, in fact, last night, I, you know, I, I have this analogy that if you sweep the kitchen floor, there's always that line of dust at the dustpan. There's certain guys that <laughs> that go and pick up the envelope and pick it up or get a newspaper and pick it up. And right. there's guys that sweep it under the refrigerator. Sure. I go now we sweep That's it under the refrigerator. Nobody knows until the refrigerator breaks and the repairman right. is coming. In. Now everybody's panicking. They're pulling out. You got brooms. You got uh, scrapers. You're trying to, because now you don't want to be exposed of, of that the fact that you got the Sahara Desert underneath right. your fucking refrigerator. But the point is, even when you're not thinking of that, you know, there's a there's an innate awareness that you are sweeping shit under your your refrigerator. Do you know what I mean like it? You're, yeah, you, especially in relationships too. like you'll get like you might get a girl based on your stories. You might get yeah. a girl on what you say, but eventually that guy you're selling he has not, to be he has, he has to, to be, be there. there. He has to show up every day. Yeah, yeah. Or else yeah. like you're going to get found out. Yeah. You know, and it might even be unintentional because you might be out there exaggerating a story that's somewhat true just to get that girl. And then all yeah. of a sudden, after a while, she sees that. Oh, wait a minute. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. This yeah. is not it, the guy I signed up for. And, you know, and it's a, the funny thing. The, the, the way I analyze that is what is, you know, you we you me and Harry talk about this all the time, how, you know, when a woman decides to go on a date with a guy, she 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 has to consider that you could kill her <laughs> or rape her like right. that. That is on the table. So whenever there's an uh, there's an incongruency to to who you say you are, incongruency means that you're being deceptive. And deceptive reads as unsafe. And so she doesn't know why all of a sudden she doesn't like you, but she doesn't because you're being incongruent. Right. They're, she's got to get out of there immediately. Yeah, right. they're, and they're wired too, man. Like they, Just like men have the, the wiring to bullshit, yeah, women yeah. also have that bullshit detector. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Uh, well, at least and the smart so, ones do. Right. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little minuscule Ticks and stuff that they give up. And so that this level of authenticity is important. We um we had a really good podcast with Greg Stone on. And Greg okay. was like, you know, Greg's Greg's, you know, self-professed nerd. And and he, you know, even when you do his podcast, he's got action figures all over the place. And he said, right. you know, initially, you know, he's married now, but initially he used to hide the action figures. Here's a crazy thing. He makes his own Star Wars figures and shit like he'll he'll pe like I, and when you think of you know what I'm saying like a, a dude like you will get you go like how remember Harry we were like that's dope as shit like that's right. cool yeah. as shit man yeah I we were like damn cool. Pretty you, you you got you start assembling pieces together and then he he paints them and he you, and you're like are you fucking like how how amazing is that right and in the real sense he was hiding that he used to hide it when girls would come over. He used to like put them away and stuff and try to like just try to not show her the stuff. He'd have to clean out his old place, put them in a put closet it back. I mean, and then he, put it back. He got yeah. he, he's got shelves and displays and stuff. So you imagine you got to wipe all of this out to hope you don't get laid when it's the thing that would get you laid in the first place. Yeah, I think something like that. Like, I mean, there's some people that like, that, like, like, uh, you know, Ray Goots, right? I know. Yeah, you, I know yeah, 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 yeah. You ever been to Ray's house? Ray, there's no way Ray's hiding any of that yeah, shit. No, no, like, no, that's no, it. No, no. Ray has Fucking no choice. Impossible. He's no choice but to be Ray. It's like he's no wallpaper. It's just DVD of of the greatest load of shit you've ever watched yeah, yeah. in your life. You know what I mean? And it's like, but he's he's still 100% him and he can't hide it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it I mean, is. It, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. Is the the it, is a, a woman will accept you for who you are if you're if you're bold enough to tell her who you are. I mean, and if she's not into it anyway, what are you doing anyway? Like this is not the chick you want a chick to go. You make your own action figures, like right. <laughs> but there's also a level of timing of that, though, too, right? You have to imp you, you have to impress, but you want to be yourself. 
you know yourself out the gate is not going to do it. Like if you go to a restaurant, I don't know, with a girl, I don't know if I agree with that, but go ahead. But for an example, right? Not all examples would work for that, right? But like, like say, okay, let's say your first, your first date is a movie and a piece of pie at the diner. That's right. can, that can be done. You watch the movie, you go to the diner, you talk about it, you find out where you are. Uh, you know what? Oh, you like comedy? Do you like horror movie? Whatever. You have that conversation. You compare right, movies. Right, right. But if you go to a, like, where do you want to go to eat your first date and you go to this nice restaurant? Now you fast forward three years, you're in a relationship. You might say, listen, honey, it's uh, at a, you know, I got a few bills coming out this month. Can we not go to that restaurant? Can we go to this instead? I don't have the money. Like your opening statement would not be that on a first date. Like it's a bit ex- like, I'm not saying like you go from fucking yeah, zero yeah, to, I, I, zero I to 100. I, I see what you're saying, but I also... Harry, what do you think? I mean, because I, I, we, we, you know, it's a balance of uh, just believing in what you believe in and just going. Yeah, if you're not into it, that's fine. I know my girl now every once in a while there's things she goes like, oh, thanks. God, thank God you don't like Disney World or thank right. God you don't like uh-huh. Star Wars. Like I'm not into sci fi. She goes, I don't know if I could be with you if I was in a uh, sci fi. I go. No, you would. You'd still yeah, be you with would. me. Yeah, but You'd still fine, be with me. The fine into it, though. Like, I'm not allowed to watch fucking a Mickey Mouse cartoon and laugh. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like, I mean, but it's all believing in what you believe in and like, hey, this is what I enjoy. You don't have to enjoy it or whatever. But it's all it's all about being confident in what you have, but being proud and, you know, making sure you have everything else taken care of. Like what people yeah. view when they talk about collecting action figures, it's like if you're living in your house and you've got nothing going on, you have no job and you're in your mom's basement. And on top of that, you collect Star Wars toys. Right. It's not a great yeah. resume, but. Listen, you can do almost anything. You can go, yeah, I'm living at my mom's place because I'm saving money because I'm moving out to a place or I'm taking care of my mom. Like whatever it is, if you're working towards something, that's what women respect. It's like, right. yeah, I, I'm I'm staying at home because I rather save my money. That's what I'm doing because I have this dream I'm chasing. Yeah. That's what right. they're here's my, passionate here's my about. Plan. Here's my yeah. plan. As long yeah. as you have a plan and you're working on something, you execute it. That's what they care about. That's what you they care about. In, you know what's interesting? More than even else. if you even if you don't have the plan and you're honest about the plan and you're willing to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is what I do. I don't I don't do that. So you right. want to you want to go go nine times out of ten. They'll be like, well, I just saw it's more about the conviction to. So so I think I think in a way, I guess why I'm pushing back on that is because we have an idea. Also, one second, sorry, I don't want to interrupt. But if if you go, hey, yeah, I'm into these things. And she goes, ew, gross. You like, know, why would you want to be with that? Yeah, get the fuck out. Why would you yes. want to be with that person anyway? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, I no. Well, I, I, mean, I, I, I remember dating a girl once and she was and, um, and you know, I'm a, I'm a really kind dude. I, you know, wherever you want to go, I'll go. I, you know, I'm not really picky. And then uh, and one day she goes to me, she says, uh, um, you know what? I'm going to have to put my foot down. Ooh. And I'm like. Pull over, so, get out. So I didn't. But now, here's the thing. I reason why I wouldn't pull over, get out is because I don't even want to give her a reason to say how. I, so I, I didn't say anything. I started the car up. I took her home. Right. <laughs> Where was this? Where were you on a date or something? How long had you known this? This uh, a woman? while, a while. A months, while, like we have months, months. We have been, yeah, we have been dating. She goes, I, she goes, I, 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 Do you I remember think I'm what gonna, about? Yeah, Not that it matters. I, yeah, I. I like, you know, Harry, whatever I do, you know, I'm indulgent. Right. So whatever food I eat is the best. If, if I'm going for burgers, I'm, I'm right. going to, I'm going to soup and burger on Broadway. If I want a grill burger, if I want to if I want a, a, a fast food, I'm going to go to Burger Fi across the street. I mean, I won't, I, I won't go to five guys because five guys wraps their burgers in foil and the steam salt wets the bread, whereas Burger five matches and pay like I'm real particular. Yeah, so, yeah. So You're kind of sore of junk. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If you pastrami, I'm going to cats. Mm. I might also go to Sarge's and I'll go to pastrami clean, but I'm not going to just get it. At, you know what I mean? Um, and sh- she will grab anything close. Right. If it's pizza, it'd be shit pizza. You know, if you ask me the best grandma pizza, I'm going to tell you go to Ben's or McDougal. But I'm, if you go, well, how's the regular slice? No, don't eat the regular slice. Okay. You want the regular slice, you go to Joe. Like, I'm like that. Okay. And so she you indulge your, your. I indulge myself. Yeah, and I so when she said, uh, she, she said, I want some pizza. 
I took her to get, I go, well, what do you want? Just a cheese slice. So I drove from uptown to, to Joe's. That's Downtown, right. uh, whatever. Yeah, but near Bleecker, and yeah. she doesn't like she doesn't like to drive in the city. Now, first of all, I'm the one that's driving. You're driving. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the stress of be- driving is is what she's uncomfortable with, which as a guy in a real sense, why would that matter? Like, yeah, like my point is, if you if you tell me I'm really uncomfortable driving around in the car in the city, wherever we got, I'd rather grab something wherever I'm, I'm I have no problem with the with the compromise. I would go. Yeah. OK, we'll grab something here, but I'm not eating it. Right. I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because my conviction is I, I'm. it's OK that that's what you want. And I have no problem making a compromise. It's just fair game. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to I'm not going to. I'm not going to bend my moral, my morality or my bound foundation or my boundaries for I will compromise them, but I'm not going to. So I drove and, and she got, you know, I hate this. I hate driving. She, she, I'm going to have to put my heart, my foot down. And I was like, I didn't even say anything. <coughs> so and I've had somebody say to me, well, you what stop did you and say? Get the pizza? Did you stop we, and get already, the pizza? we got the pizza oh, yeah. I, and she's eating the pizza. And I go, uh, she goes, I'm going to put. I stop the car up and I drive her home. She lives about an hour away. I meet. I don't go. I don't have a conversation. I don't, you don't say, say nothing. nothing. You didn't say nothing during the ride. <laughs> so we turn, get turn to, the radio on. Radio on or off? No radio. Love it. Wow. Thank you. Love it. No, love, it love it. Love it. Silence. Jesus. Right. We're gonna be uncomfortable. We all gonna. We all That's gonna like be a com- Russian hitman shit. Like just. <laughs> <laughs> We get to her house. She goes, you want to come up? I go, absolutely not. She goes, OK. And then she gets out and I pull off. You don't open the door for her. Just speed I, off. I, I, <laughs> and then I go and I I'm with not the, having this conversation of, with the speed of a Russian Uber driver. <laughs> so just like, floor what, the fuck what, out of there. What did you what did you say? I didn't even speed. That's the thing. I wouldn't even do that. I don't even want you to think I'm angry. I just oh, want you I get to, it. uh, it's because if you think about it, you know, with, a, with anybody, you man, do woman, a baby driver style, you dog, go baby in, driver style. Indifference, indifference is the worst thing to swallow. Dante had, t- had his hands 10 and two on the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Seatbelt checking yeah. the mirrors. Seatbelt <laughs> adjusted the mirrors. She's well, she's like, good night. I was like, good night. <laughs> and that was the last time you saw her. It, it's because you got it. Well, it's interesting because now we I got to call the next day. You know, I realize I, you know, I shouldn't have said that. So I didn't even have to explain it. So mm. the point is, if you're arguing about something, if you lead off with the argument, you 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 you're negotiating without knowing what your leverage is. Right. I so got it. If she calls me back and says, listen, uh, can we talk about this now? We're having a discussion about this. But in the context of the fact that she wants to she understands that this is at the that the, the, you've crossed the line and this could mean we're done. That that's an argument that women in from my experience don't like when I argue, I'm very calm. And this right. is me. It's yes. like, let me. Let me get my point across. I don't want to insult you. I don't want to yell. Right. Because I watched my parents do it for years and there was nothing <laughs> productive in it. Right, right. And it's like, and then they get pissed off when I don't, when they're yelling and you don't match their voice or match their tone. Like, you know, what I always used to do was like, which was kind of sneaky, but it always worked. I would go, look at, it. I'm sorry you feel that way. They would just hear the words, I'm sorry. And they're fine with that. They didn't exactly hear what I said. Yeah, like, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm saying like, I'm sorry. You're a fucking psychopath. But I'm saying, I'm sorry you feel that way. And uh-huh. they're like, okay, I'm good with that. He apologized. Like, no, I didn't. No, right? yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I well, the, I'm sorry you feel that way. Don't don't worry. I think that uh, expired a couple years ago. Yeah, that, I'm yeah, sorry you feel they, that they, way. That people might not work anymore. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they read my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I it's it's a weird thing. I got a, I got I, it's funny. I was counseling a dude last night and the dude's got this new girl and the girl is she's Muslim. OK, um, good, good, really good friend of mine. She's Muslim, but she doesn't believe in she. She's not Muslim. Her family is from is is from Middle East, but okay. she's Muslim and he really likes her and stuff. And so 
he's t- he's saying to me, you know, I mean, we're thinking about taking another step, but in order to do that, um, I-, I would probably have to convert. And he goes, well, she's, you know, her family's Muslim. Wait, 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 wait. Who said that she would have to convert? He said and in he order said to keep the she, relationship in order, to, in order to marry her. Right. And with her parents, he would have to create this facade. And he's got to not do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's too much responsibility it, to right. change your religion. Your be- like, even if you have no beliefs, that's like someone telling you every day now you have to wear a green shirt. Like what? I don't No, no. It'll keep my family happy. Right. And, and it's not even that. I mean, that's more extreme. No matter what religion you change to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're you're telling me just because I want to be with this girl, I have to change my whole. Be- like I have to. Like, like, if you want to be, if it's like being with a girl, like, if you want to be with me, you have to believe the earth is flat now. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I'm I, not going to believe yeah, that. Right, right, right. Well, here's an interesting thing. You know, I mean, I don't know if you know this about uh, Islam, but if you mm. if you quit Islam, you're what you call an apostolate, which yes. is is punishable by death. Right. <laughs> it's punishable by. Now I'm saying I'm not saying everybody does that, but that's. Right. That is the case. I go, dude, what are you, you going to get a prayer cloth? You're going to pray five times a day. You I go, you and your girl are in the States eating bacon on Ramadan. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have little kids and then you go to you go to the to, to the Middle East to meet with her. And now you got to like I go, you're I, I, do you understand how insane yeah. it is? Like and kids will all rat you out too. Like if you go back with your kids, like <laughs> well, gonna, look how great we are as Muslim. Like dad eats bacon on a Friday. What the fuck? <laughs> like all of a sudden, yeah, no, no, kids no. Are snitches. Yeah, ruin, yeah, that's ruin exactly the whole what fucking it is. thing. Yeah, but it's like to 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 literally, and I go and, and so, but the the girl herself is is she so she's living the lie. Because she's pretty much atheist now anyway. Right. And so she's putting on this facade whenever she goes, sees her parents and stuff. And I'm like, and, and, and you know, the, the reality so now you is. You want to spend the rest of your life living a threes company episode where you got to yeah, run around from room to room pretending right, that you're yeah, not yeah. eating pork and you're it's like, <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire when he's running back and forth. Right. right. Yeah. So insane. <laughs> I mean, and I was just, like, dog, are you stop, really going to? Are you really going to do this? I go, I go. And and the reality and, I, and something I say is, you know, is always interesting is that as a as a man, you know, this being man school to as a man, you have to be strong enough to protect yourself from her emotions. You Absolutely. also you have to be strong enough to protect your relationship from her emotions. Right. And you have to be strong enough to protect her from her emotions. Now, what what do you say, Dante, when women go, uh, oh, like men aren't emotional? This, that's not that. But I don't when they aren't say men aren't men alive, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. I, 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 I'm not having a discussion with you because I'm not discussing this in a sense. I, I had, a, I had a, a girl ask me, she goes, what do you think about women uh, proposing to men? And I go, if a guy doesn't ask you to marry him, he doesn't want to get married. Right. Right. To the same token, I tell guys all the time, never ask a girl to be your girlfriend. If she's not asking you, if she's not going, what are we doing? Right. She don't like you either. That's a good point. And right. the, and the reality is that the difference in so they say, well, why should I have to ask that? Women say, why should I have to ask? And I because there's a time element. Like I'm 55 years old. I got a, I got a one year old. Right. Like there is a biological clock that you what your consideration is. And I'm not saying that I, I, I I'm insensitive to it, but it's not on the front of my on the front burner right. for me because it's not my concern. And I have to put my happiness first, just like she has to put her happiness. And if she's looking for to have kids or do this or do that or be married or whatever, then she has to be honest about that as well. Yeah. And if, you know, and there has to be some conviction about that. I agree. There's, there's, but like, there's nothing, you know, worse when you see a peep, a couple of Disney and she's proposing in front of the castle. Ugh. And it's like, you have demasculated him in front of fucking everybody in front of Disney. Yeah, he's like, Fuck, <laughs> now I'm emasculated. Now I, there's no coming back from that. And I think you're setting the tone for your relationship. And like you said, like, all right, maybe he didn't. He hasn't saved up enough for the ring yet. And he's get, he hasn't got around to it, but this fucking chick jumped the gun and she ruined his surprise. 
Uh, I mean, my brother in Ireland woke up on Valentine's Day, forgot it was Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. and his gar- his girlfriend gave him something, and then he went, "You want to get married?" Like, it was, <laughs> like it was, I want you to go pick out the ring because I'm always bad with jewelry, whatever. And he only, I mean, they're married now with two kids, bless him. And uh, but he only asked her to marry her because he forgot to get her a gift on Valentine's. That's now, only- was was he into marrying her in the first place? Or I, mean, did, or- I, I didn't ask him, but I mean, they're still together. They're still happy, I guess. You yeah, know, yeah. we got yeah. two kids. But I think it was funny that he was like, I'll fucking ask you just because I've no gift. Like, it's, yeah. it's no better. It's not, you don't get out of that. Like, you don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, clearly they got two kids and they. I hope he's happy. But Jesus Christ, it's just I was like, Doug, you don't even know when you what you got. to Now you got to you got to take a class on the practices of Islam and like and then you got to hold it together because you you and your you and your you and your girl, you and your wife, you're eating bacon on Ramadan and and (laughs) like, you know what I'm saying? And then you go and you got to check. It's insane. And I go, if somebody I go, if your parents are willing to say if they, if their love for you is conditional, unfortunately, it's painful. Right. But do but isn't it better that you know that their love is conditional based on they're like I don't I'm I, you know you're dead to me if you are not a Muslim. Right. Yeah, it puts it all in perspective for you. Like yeah. that, you know that's they're not the people you want to be. They're not going to get your back when you fucking need them. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Unless of course you you know you're not even. Bacon never, you never want to say you're willing to do something that you have no intention oh. of doing. Yeah. 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 Why like do, prom- why promising do that? my wife to go parachute jumping? Like, sure, we'll go, honey. I'm not going parachute jumping. Yeah. 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 Out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Out of your mind. And you know what? The, the funny thing is they'll always, you know, they'll respect you more if you go. I am absolutely not doing that. Um, Mick, plug your, your social media, your podcast, all this stuff. Yeah, down. I appreciate that. Mick Thomas comedy on everything uh, uh, on Twitter and on Instagram. And my uh, podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy, is uh, it's out every week. It's on everywhere you get your podcast from. Man, Mick, it was good fun having you on. Dog, yeah, man, man, I appreciate I, you I appreciate having you me on. I really do. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you coming on. Um, Harry, talk to me. Uh, all my stuff is uh, at Harry Turjanian. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. Check out my stand-up clips. And then also join us over at Man School 202 on uh, Instagram and Patreon. That's where we're doing some of the bonus stuff. We're uh, gearing up to do some more specials and stuff. We haven't done enough in a while, but we're getting there. We appreciate all you guys. Yeah, no doubt. Everything with me. Yeah, come and doc. join us. We're going to do some Q&A, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of advice. Yeah, please, so join please us over go at Patreon. All the Patreon, please uh, send us some questions and stuff like that, stuff that you're worrying, worrying about or you're thinking about. Um, hit us up. Uh, everything, my stuff is on the Dante Nero. Dante, Google me. You know what it is. Uh, if you need a one-on-one consultation, go to DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, all that shit. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcast. Yo, I love y'all. We are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.